Good evening, everybody, and uh, <sighs> happy holidays. It's Christmas. We were just out Christmas shopping in downtown Sanford. Yes, we yes. were. And let's see. iPhone broadcast, and here I <gasps> Oh, our names. There oh, we are. Look, we got it reversed <laughs> again. Always, again. Always got it backwards. But <laughs> I'm okay. Sheree. And I'm Chris. And we are Technomadia, and you're watching the Technomadia <laughs> channel uh, live stream. If you're, if you're watching this on December 13th, anyway, it is coming to you live. So we're here hanging out with you. So interact in the chat room, and um, we're going to present and talk and have fun. Yeah. If uh, you are watching this as an archive, so after December 13th at 8 p.m. Eastern, um, welcome. If you have questions as you go along, just leave them in the comments. We'll get to them when we can. Uh, if you're watching live, we will be taking uh, questions after we get done with the presentation portion. I don't recommend starting the questions now because we might we'll, be able to scroll back. Yeah. yeah. But okay. we do welcome questions later on. This evening we are presenting on the cost of staying in marinas. I think we should give a really brief recap of our perspective and what okay. our goal yeah. here is. So so we've been RVers for the past 12 years. So we've, we've been on the road for a long time and have a lot of experience living in RV parks and RV campgrounds and just all the different ways to do RVing. But now the past two years, we've been on a boat. Almost two years. Almost It'll be two years. March 2019 will <laughs> yes. be our two-year boat anniversary. What? I don't know. I'm making up words. Yes. So, uh. <laughs> so, so we're still not like, you know, salty veterans who've been up and down every coast and who are super experienced, but we've got enough experience now that we can kind of really share what we've learned and compare and contrast. So bit. we had a lot of questions when we first embarked on this adventure about what the differences in costs were going to be from our being. And we didn't feel comfortable really sharing too much of that. I mean, we've been sharing kind of on a point by point case, but now we have enough data points that we can probably give you some reasonable feedback. Just keep in mind, all of our perspective is on cruising in Florida. All of our cruising since we got our boat has been in Florida. Yes. So we know things are different. We will comment a few things we've heard from other people, but this is our experience in Florida past two years. <laughs> all right. So some of the biggest differences between RV parks and campgrounds and marinas is when you're in a RV park, you typically have a flat rate. <laughs> yeah. So, so every, every up, it's, it's, you pay by the night. It doesn't matter if you're coming, if you're showing up in a tiny little camper van or a 45 foot behemoth bus towing a giant trailer full of other stuff. A lot of campgrounds charge you exactly the same, regardless of what you show up in. <laughs> so they might have like, full hookup sites, they might have water electric, yeah. you might have premium sites versus basic sites, but typically a flat rate. Yeah, they don't measure you. Boats, everything is about the foot. It's about your size. It yeah. matters in what you're paying for a dock space. It matters in what you're paying for maintenance and things like that going on. But this video is focused on the marina costs. Um, so it makes a huge difference and it's by the foot. But that's where it gets tricky is how large is your boat? Um, your documented length or the length that is kind of indicated in the model number of your boat, there's really no standards on what the length of your boat is. And all boats are kind of have different shapes. Yeah. So I did a little graphic. Okay. Not that one. Why did it go to that? Ding, ding, ding. <sighs> there we are. There you go. <laughs> all right. I did a little graphic this, up this morning when I was trying to think about how we're going to talk about this. Here are five different possible lengths that our boat, why not, which is a 1999 Bayliner 4788. And you might think the 47 stands for 47 feet. And <laughs> sort of does. It kind of does for one of the lengths. Um, at the bottom, you see the loaded waterline length. Um, and that is basically... How much, if you're, if you're a fish, what kind of a length would you see our boat as from underwater? 44 right. feet so taking down. So what are the parts that touch the water? Mm -hmm. And uh, the bay liner, I had to go look this up, look through a lot of the forums, and the general consensus seems to be it's about 44 feet. That number really doesn't come up all that often. Yes. No. The, the one that does come up a lot is the length of your hull. In this case, that's where the name comes in of our boat, the 4788. It, the hull is 47 feet long. Um, this is referred to as the LOH. I've also seen it referred to as the LOD, the length on deck. So this is basically measuring the, the molded part of the boat when they build it, and also the parts that you can walk around and are kind of part of your living space. Yes. 
but sometimes you know boat manufacturers uh, kind of uh, either you know bend the numbers a little bit because our boat changed models exact same hull became the Meridian four nine uh, four ninety well forty nine foot boat even though the <laughs> hull was exactly, exactly the, same. the same. So a lot of times okay then there's the LOA which is length overall and. When you're looking at the whole length, that is not including uh, the extended parts of the boat that you don't actually not consider part of the livable space. So the bow pulpit, the swim, swim platform. platform, and if in our case we have a dinghy off a davit system off the back of our swim platform, it doesn't include all that. But the LOA or length overall does. So that's how much space you need to squeeze in in your. If you're, imagine if you're parallel parking, you need that much space. Although. Sometimes, actually, a lot of marinas, they will squeeze your bow pulpit will hang over your neighbor's dinghy and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, you know, still, <laughs> they bend the rules. <laughs> so there's, there's a joke in the boating community that uh, when you're asked what size your boat is, it depends on who you're talking to. Are you talking to the dock master or a boat yard? Well, then your boat's 47 feet. If you're talking to uh, someone at uh, the club or a, a happy hour or a bar, then your bragging rights, you want to say... Uh, 56, 56 feet. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, particularly if you're, because you're being charged by the foot and that's where it gets really tricky because, well, if they're charging you by the foot, you don't want to pay more than you need to. But on the other hand, if you're trying to squeeze into a marina and you tell them you want a 47 foot spot and you show up and you're 56 feet hanging out either it end. It ain't going to work. Usually. They're going to be unhappy with you. <laughs> so you can turn back. Most dock masters know, and it really depends upon what your documented length is. So what gets put on your registration and title is it can vary so much by what your manufacturer submitted in the official build when they the, boat. the build parameters of the boat ours is 47 feet four inches is our documented length that's what's on our title and our registration um, that's what our insurance is based on but when we are talking to a marina to make a reservation we tell them our documented hull length is 47 and our overall length we need is about 56 including our dinghy and so far i think almost almost universally the every dock master we've talked to has charged us the 47 but given us the given us space to actually dock so um that's but we've heard plenty of stories yeah. of the opposite uh, we have had one marina where that was not the case uh, they actually charge by the size slip you need without overhanging it and so they charged us for 55 feet um, on that particular marina. So far, that's the only one that has charged us more. Yeah. And we're always up front. We mm -hmm. let them determine what they're charging us. And most of the time, they have taken the documented length for what they charge us and then the overall length for selecting the slip they put us into. But we've also been traveling off season and usually they're just happy to have any business <laughs> that, at all. That is true. In prime season, that could be very different. Um, all right, so the next difference between um, Oh, so what, what are the charges for daily versus stuff? So most marinas, uh, like RV parks, have a daily rate. They have a weekly rate, and they have a monthly rate. And, and so if you look at... Sometimes even, like, special, even longer-term rates. All right. So here in Florida, this is the range that we've typically seen. Okay. So, yeah, it's, as you see, it can be a huge, huge range. Some marinas, not so bad. Some... Actually, even 350 a foot, we haven't been to one that's charged more, but we've seen examples. I've actually been called around and turned been hung up on places when they say it's $5 a foot. I'm like, holy crap, no. Um, <laughs> Outside our budget. Yeah, that's uh, what our 47-foot boat with a $5. Oh, yeah, I don't even want to think about how much the nightly fee would be for that. <laughs> that's per night. Yeah. Um, weekly, it gets uh, a little bit cheaper, uh, 6 to $12 per foot. Basically, you're pay if you paid for five days, you're getting two or three, you know, two. It usually works out about that rate. Yeah. And then the monthly is where it gets really affordable at 10 to $25 per foot. Um and that's getting it down to what most of us can perhaps budget in. Yeah, it's oftentimes better to get a monthly rate even if you leave after 10 days. Sometimes that weeks. works out that way. Yeah, yeah. two weeks. Yeah. Um, we are finding, in comparison to our RVing life, uh, on a daily basis, um, marina spaces are somewhere between twice to five times more expensive for us than it would be for our RV. Um, the weekly is also much more expensive, usually. I mean... 
keep in mind when we're staying in our RV, we typically lean towards state parks, state parks, Army Corps of Engineer parks. We rarely stay at commercial RV and parks. Particularly if it has resort in the name, that's usually a sign that it's not our kind of RV mm-hmm. park. And then on a monthly basis, we are finding most of our marina fees are pretty comparable to if we were staying in the same area in an RV park, that the, the fee to stay there would be somewhat similar for an RV versus yep. our uh, boat. So that's been really good. Now, but <laughs> yeah, so, so when you we, when you're staying at a marina, there's also it's not usually flat rate. Most RV parks is flat rate, particularly for daily and weekly, um, even sometimes monthly. But when you're in a marina, you usually pay an extra fee for your electric. You potentially, if you're staying longer, you pay a live aboard fee if you're not if you're on your boat more than I think it's 14 days, 13 days a month. 10 days a month is usually 10, 10 the... days is a, mm-hmm. one of the things you might be paying extra for pump outs if you want to get your poop pumped away, which you probably do if you're actually living on board. Um, and then sometimes resort fees and even uh, tipping your dockhands and stuff. You got to f- right. factor in all those costs. And of course, I, on my my slide there, I have a typo. We have the eclectic fees. Eclectic fees. Eclectic fees. fees. Elective, <laughs> but know. not elective fees. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, by the food. Da, 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 da. So electric is. Um, it gets interesting. You can go back to Maine. Um, okay. No face. You almost always pay extra for electric um, at private marinas. On a daily and weekly basis, it's usually just a flat rate. So, it, and it's determined if you're 30 or 50 amp. Um, or 100 amps. Ouch. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. We're a 50 amp boat, so that's what we're most used to paying. On a daily basis, we expect somewhere between 5 and $10 per day. And on a weekly basis, somewhere between... What have we seen there? Uh, so I had a like, chart. Uh, 6 to 12 to, No, that's wrong. <laughs> uh, weekly, somewhere between 50 and $100 a week is what we've been paying. When you get to a monthly rate, they usually have a flat monthly rate or it is metered. Mm-hmm. Uh, the monthly rates, we have seen them being between 80 and $150 a month. And then our metered rates, have you even been paying attention to Do, metered rates? Um, no, the metered rates, it's, it's usually kind of not a big deal. We usually find for us, our metered rates are much less than what we paid when we pay flat. So I like metered rates. Yeah, metered rates are good. And particularly once we get the solar up top, um, we will mm-hmm. hopefully be not metering all that much mm-hmm. unless we're really cranking in air conditioning. So um, yeah, so metered is good. And, mm-hmm. um, and then when you are dealing with a monthly rate, um, some marinas charge that livable fee differently. Mm-hmm. Some just have a different per foot rate. So like at Ortega Landing, when we stayed there in Jacksonville, they it was $12 per foot if you were just storing your boat, not living aboard it. If you're staying aboard, then it was $16 per foot. Right. We've been to other marinas. Um, what? The... You don't even pay attention to this stuff, no, uh, Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like what it, 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 actually that's one big difference with marinas is usually with RV parks you can price compare and be like okay I got a better deal over here with marinas there's usually not a lot of options in a place you might want to be sometimes there's only one option so okay so going back to go liveaboard fees yes. I was going to show the other example okay <laughs> which is uh, instead of paying uh, different rates per foot is they would have just a live a flat liveaboard fee so like a hundred dollars a month is what we're paying right. at this marina we paid as much as $150 per month. Sometimes it's usually per household, but sometimes it is per couple or sometimes they might have a per person yeah. rate. And that's technically what's giving you access to the amenities, you know, the clubhouse mm-hmm. and the, the mm-hmm. fitness center is one of the places we had had that hot tub even. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So to live aboards monthly included different per foot. I think we're ready to show some of the examples. Okay. And I did see it's it. How did oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, okay. Yeah, right. All right. So here's a sample. Um, you want to put our. Yeah, that's what, I was, that's what I was trying to go back to. Okay. All right. So our um, this is a sample that I put together. Uh, I think we paid yeah Melbourne Harbor Marina. We were paying a daily rate there. They did not have a weekly, which is what we would have preferred. Um, so their rate was a dollar seventy five per foot, and the stock master only charged us for the forty seven foot. So that came out to eighty two twenty five. Then uh, 50 amp electric was eight dollars flat rate, mm-hmm. and then sales tax on top of that. So it was just under a uh, hundred bucks a night to stay there. 
And we would have preferred to stay for an entire week, but it, there was no discount for doing that, so we minimized our stay to just four nights because it was yeah. painful. Yes, and uh, we were there specifically because that's where family lives, and we were there to visit, and we wanted easy shore access, and it was right downtown. Mm -hmm. So it You're was paying for location. So it was paying for location. Normally, in that sort of situation, we probably would not have stayed four nights if it wasn't for a reason to be there. Right. Um, so that's not typical for us. We try to avoid the nightly uh, marinas unless there's no other option. We do a lot of anchoring out instead when we're yeah. in transit to our next location. Yeah. Or, or there are actually, just like in RVing, there are some places where you find free marinas or free dockage mm -hmm. and stuff like that, sometimes even with power like Jacksonville. But yeah. Free docks are there. They are there if you <laughs> yes, find exactly. them. Um, it is an option. Okay. Why is it doing that? There All right. Is. Here is a sample of a weekly. Okay. Um, I forgot which one I based this one on. I f oh, I forget. I should have marked it. Okay. Oh, well. Anyway, the, the weekly rate was $7.50. So this marina also only charged just the 47 which came out to be about three fifty. The 50 amp electric was uh, $60 for a week. It's a little pricey, but... And then the tax on top of that. For, for reference on electric, when we are uh, metered for a month, 60 to 70 is about what we're being charged, even the in the heat of summer. For the entire month. So, <laughs> so paying that for, for a week, week is crazy. Um, so about $430 for a weekly stay at this particular marina. I believe uh, their daily rate at this one was also about a buck seventy-five. We saw a buck seventy-five being the standard most of the way once we got out of South Florida all the way up north. It mm -hmm. seemed to be about the going rate. Next example. This is a monthly example here. So this is uh, the Legacy Harbor in Fort Pierce. It was no, the Fort. Oh, see, I yeah, did okay. wrong. That's Fort, Fort Myers. Myers. Yeah, Oops. so I'm like, <laughs> like, wait, like, uh, yeah, <laughs> we both got that one wrong. <laughs> okay. But yes, it was. It was. Uh, th this place actually has seasonal rates. So we were there in the summer, and their summer rates are actually pretty darn good. Their winter rates were seventeen or eighteen dollars a foot. I yeah, think it's is a lot more. Rate. So here it worked out the the fourteen dollars a foot, six, only six hundred fifty eight dollars a month, plus the liveaboard fee, plus the electric, plus six percent tax. So it was not a bad cost for a month. Yep, yeah, and that marina we were smack dab downtown in Fort Myers, access to everything, grocery store just around the corner, about twenty restaurants. It was a really an amazing stay. We ended up there, I believe, three months. Yeah, yeah, and and you I mean we could literally just right across the street was a Publix and like dozens of restaurants so close by. Okay. Here's another example. So monthly. this was our last monthly one up in um, Jacksonville. Um, they just went up on their rates, but these were their rates when we were there um, just a couple months ago. Uh, they charge $16 per foot for live aboard. And if you are just storing, it was only $12 per foot. Mm -hmm. But now, here's the difference on the, the, the size. Okay. So some of the differences, well, they charge you for extra pump outs. They get two free okay, well, per Let's month? start with the size of the boat. Oh, Oh, yeah, the size. So, <laughs> yes, this one, yes, they charge you for the size of the, the slip, the size you need to fit into. And that if we had actually come back and stayed, they might have needed to put us in a, a 60 or 70 foot slip and they would have charged us that entire amount to squeeze us in there. Yeah, well, I think they were, they um, had a 70 foot slip reserved for us for our return. That's where we were going to store this winter. And they were going to charge us a minimum. I think they're going to charge us a $60 minimum fee or 60 foot minimum on that, even though we technically don't need that much. Um, so the cost to store up there is going to be much more expensive. So I'm kind of glad it worked out. We didn't. It was a great marina to stay at. It's totally worth it to stay at because they have a hot tub, they have a pool, they took us to a baseball game, okay. they have a monthly great community location, activities, great easy location. Access to groceries. For living there, it's worth it. For storage, uh, it would have been our. Yes. pricey store. I love my boat, but um, it doesn't need pampering that and, much. And, and then there was another um, kind of surprise up in uh, the Jacksonville area is the double tax. You've got a submerged land lease tax, whatever that is, and the sales tax. So, mm -hmm. And their livable fee was uh, baked into the monthly rate. Uh, so there wasn't an extra fee on that, but their liveaboard, they only include two pump outs a month. Um, and that's usually about right for us. Somewhere between 10 and 14 days is more ideal for us. So if we wanted to, and they only came and pumped you out once a week. There's, yeah, it's it was not on, on your own schedule. not on your schedule. We prefer marinas that you can pump out whenever you like. Yes. Um, so sometimes the timing within a month, it just worked out that we needed three pump outs in a month and they would charge you $15 extra per pump out. Ouch. Yes. Plus, they are sending someone to your dock, so you kind of have that expectation of tipping the pump out person. Even if they just hand you the hose and you do all the work yourself. It's right. okay. like, okay. Yep. All right. Let's 
Got it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, there we are. All right. So are we? Oh, so look, before we go to there, let's talk one more thing. So that's that's transient okay. uh, stuff. Um, and the sorts of things that you can expect and look out for. So when you're pricing your own stays, be sure to look at the marina's full website. For They usually disclose all this, but you're going to have to do some math to figure mm -hmm. out what your actual cost is going to be because you can't just go by the dollar per foot. Yeah, And, and also be aware that a lot of marinas have discounts for uh, members of various cruising associations mm -hmm. or um, if you're a CETO or Towboat US and stuff, you might always find out if those mm -hmm. discounts apply. Right. So um, sometimes they offer discounts to uh, Great Loop members, so the right. AGLCA or MTOA, Seven Seas Cruising Association. Yeah. So a lot of the uh, membership clubs have also gotten a discount. Usually it's only 10%. Yep. But uh, sometimes a, if you, like, attend a boat meetup, like we did in Fort Pierce. Yeah, they, they had, um, connect, well, oh, yeah, the, the meetup had arranged an incredible um, rate for people to attend, and then you could extend that out. So we stayed there for two, two months, months at, at an incredibly discounted rate because of the meetup. Which is great. Great, great yeah. way to save some money. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about um, long-term leases. So these are transient. These, are these rates that we just talked about are intended for people like us that are cruising yeah. and moving on, even mm -hmm. though sometimes we're slow. It's a month or two, but yes, still transient. Um, there is also another long-term lease option, and these are more considered for people that are storing their boats locally. Or living on their boats locally. So, and then, or those of us that are staying seasonally. So these are, this is when you're staying more than a month and you're actually signing a lease. You're actually giving them all your documentation to have on file insurance. You might even assign your insurance, make them a, a payee on your insurance policy. Uh, you might go through a credit check. You're going to put up a deposit for electric mm -hmm. and also for last month's slip fees. Um, so it's more like a renting an apartment or mm -hmm. a short-term rental. That you're renting a hole in the water. And for that, you might get a discount. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's just three or five percent off of the transient rates um and sometimes it's pretty significant yeah. um like yeah. uh, like here where it was fifteen dollars a month at the transient rates but we're paying eight dollars and eighty cents on a long-term lease even though the long-term lease we could leave any time month, month to month with a 30-day notice right so look into that. i mean if you're planning to do a longer stay uh, as you know talk with your marina about what if they have any long-term spots sometimes they only have a limited number yeah. that they they offer at those rates and one one thing also to keep in mind is if you're at a marina and you're like wow i'm falling in love with this place talk to the marina about rolling over what you've already spent on your daily or weekly spot into a longer stay we've actually done this once where the marina's like well oh you want to change from weekly to monthly we actually owe you money now <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> happened. Yeah, we'd already paid two weeks, and then we decided to stay for a month. It's like, well, you've actually technically paid for the month. I'm like, why didn't you tell us that up front? Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> and then another consideration is um, maybe you want to stay five weeks instead of a month, or you need to extend your stay by a few days, is make sure you know up front if your marina charges a prorated rate based upon mm -hmm. whatever the discount rate is that you already have unlocked or if they go back to the full rate. We've mm -hmm. seen it both ways. Usually it's prorated, but yeah. uh, we were caught off guard by one uh, marina when we thought that by extending for four days at the end of our month that it would be at the prorated rate because they kind of had indicated that. But yeah. at the end, they charged us at the full daily uh, rate. The full daily rate. So it was like, yeah. whoa, that was a lot more expensive than I was yeah. expecting. I wouldn't have extended at yeah. that. And then another thing to keep in mind for discounts is some marinas, um, we particularly saw this at Ortega Landing, will let you get a month but split it in half because they're catering to people who are doing the St. John's River cruise who will do two weeks, then cruise up the river, and then get the second half of their month on their way back, back. down. Mm -hmm. So depending upon location and what else there is to explore around, some marinas do have uh, special discounts and stuff like that. So yeah. definitely look into that. Um, we're going to um, show you what our 2018 Marina Costs event. If you have questions, go ahead and start queuing them up because uh, this will be about a time when we'll transition into the Q&A portion. Um, so this is our month-by-month -month costs of Marina stays for all of this year. So we finally have a whole year's worth of data to share with you. Um, for perspective, we thought when we set off that we would be doing a lot of anchoring out. We would be like staying in constant motion, kind of like we do when we RV, um, as we were doing the loop a lot faster. Yeah, but we we settled into this a uh, slower pace, both for tackling. We did a couple extended stays, um, some very extended stays for some major projects. And then we just fell in love with some of these extended stays of loving to be in towns for a longer period of time. So 
the, the pace has been a lot more is... sane. <laughs> so we shifted our intentions from doing lots of anchoring out and then maybe only paying for a few nights of Here marinas along the way to get to provision at shore access or places where anchorages weren't an option. And that's really shifted. It's kind of almost the opposite is what we're typically finding is we'll spend a week or two in transit anchoring out along the way doing free docks and free options and then we find the next fun city with a great marina downtown yeah, and with a good monthly rate and stay there and that has actually been fantastic for us yeah. now i do imagine that particularly once we have more of our alternative energy system going and we're we're doing some more extended cruising some of the ratios might change, but not super dramatically. I mean, we really do like balancing, mixing it up between anchored and long-term marina stays. But we don't know. I mean... <laughs> Who knows what next year will look like? Who knows? So the first three months of this year, uh, if you remember this time last year, we were on the hard in Miami uh, having repairs done after we hit that submerged channel market that mar knocked our prop yeah. off. And then we tackled um, repainting the bottom hole and marine electronics and a bunch of other little projects yeah. and uh, post-hurricane damage. Yeah, so our repaired. most expensive um, stays of the year were when we weren't even on the boat and our boat was basically at the end of the Miami International Airport runway, the, the least desirable place of the year, but it was South Florida and you pay a premium. Right. So we needed to return to our RV for a couple months to uh, get it repositioned out to Texas, and, present and at the RV. Right. Uh, summit thing and then um, South Florida there just were no options for storing on land and for us to get the boat out of South Florida to cheaper areas was just more than we were we were too exhausted to yeah. even handle it and and we just didn't have a chance to, sh to make me even trust that the boat was ready for its full hadn't been shaken down yet after all that work we so, haven't done a sea trial yet right. uh, after all the engine work so we just had to, you know, bite our teeth and grit it. And, uh, you know, we ended up paying $1,400 a month to store the boat, essentially, underneath the Miami airport. That was one of the cheapest rates we could find in all of Miami. At, I think it was 27 or 28 bucks a foot. Yes. It's crazy. Um, and that really skewed our average for the year. Um, it did. <laughs> so be prepared for that. You might get stuck in areas with a, a higher cost than you anticipate. Um, April was a lot better. Uh, we did, I think we spent about 10 days of uh, transiting up the ICW to Fort Pierce. Yeah, at anchor, magic, you know, free, free places, beautiful, uh, dinging ashore, and it's very cheap to travel that way. Mm -hmm. um, May, in, uh, basically April and May is when we stayed in Fort Pierce using that great MTOA rate, so that really brought the cost down, and that's when we tackled a lot of interior projects and, and the generator swap. Generator. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, June, we uh, did... We transited from Fort Pierce up to New Smyrna Beach. It's kind of splitting that out between anchoring out and doing transient stops. We had my mom aboard, which was a lot of the yeah. reason for uh, the the stops. She's not as comfortable with the dinghy, so. Right. And yeah, and it's yeah more fun to just be able to easily get ashore yep. when you've got family to tour. Yep. And then we found New Smyrna Beach, and so half that month was at their uh, monthly rate, um, and then we stayed in New, New Smyrna Beach for most of July as well, and then we also had a weekly stay tacked in there as well then uh august was um we got our experience with uh, mooring balls in uh saint augustine and really enjoyed that that's a very cost effective way to kind of get the benefits of marina a lot of them um but at a the discounted cost we still had easy easy access to yes. the town though the mooring ball was fabulous uh theirs was twenty dollars a night flat it included a, a, a boat coming out to you and pumping you out shore access to their facilities laundry room um Yep. All sorts of great stuff. And then the great city access. Um, August and September is when we, in the first part of October, we did two months stay up in Jacksonville. So you saw the cost of what the, how that broke out. So it was kind of split between two months there. And then uh, we spent two weeks on the St. John's River getting here to Sanford. It was all anchoring out. And then we got here to Sanford and we've got this incredible monthly rate. So that's our cost. So average out at uh, $937 a month. Which is not bad for always living on the water in places where people spend millions <laughs> for condos that have our view. Oh, yeah, no, we've, we've seen houses, or condos for sale, million dollar condos. We were what was out their window. It's kind of crazy. Yes. <laughs> All right. So that wraps up our presentation portion. We do have a blog post up. I just put it up this afternoon, or this evening, just before we broadcast uh, that goes over all of this. And this video will become archived in that. So if you want to go look over the numbers again, you want to see those slides or anything like that, they're all there. Uh, feel free to, to utilize that. Hopefully it 
summarize just remember it's based on our experience who knows we might get to georgia and everything's all different yeah that's true <laughs> so again we are not salty sailors or salty cruisers <laughs> who've been everywhere but we are learning and we're sharing as, as we, we go mm -hmm. all right it is uh time to start the q a i think mm -hmm. we need to get some wine out to go along with this um we yeah, are this is this is our personal channel we profit crush all right um this is our personal channel. Uh, everything that we... Health is good. No data. Streaming. It's back. Okay. There, it probably was only just that one 30 seconds of uh, network glitch. So hopefully we'll go back to George's question. How um, do, how do uh, slips compare to mooring balls? So uh, as far as Costco, most mooring balls that we've encountered are a flat rate. Mm -hmm. um, and there's usually a daily rate, a weekly rate, and a monthly rate, those that we've seen that are associated with a marina. And the nice thing about a mooring ball is you are on your own little island. You've got a big, better view. You know, in a marina, you know, downtown marina, sometimes you have your neighbor is, you know, right across a finger pier from you. Mooring ball, you've got the views, and you're out surrounded by water. That's also the downside. You can't just step off and go walking. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, you know, anchoring is typically free, but you know, there are places that are managed anchoring fields where there may actually be a permit fee to anchor in the area. We've heard of that as well. We have not encountered it yet, but uh, we are prepared that that is uh, something that happens. Yeah, you've got, you, you always have to refer to things like active captain and waterway guide mm -hmm. and just understand the situations you're heading mm -hmm. into and find, find the cool places and the free places and the cheap mm -hmm. places and the awesome places. And, all right. Laughter on Water asks, would it have been cheaper to have somebody boat sit rather than have it in storage for three months? So it was in wet storage. <laughs> yes. So in order to have someone on board or not, it would have cost the same. And we actually did have some boat sitters, um, some longtime Patreons and fellow Bayliner owners who were in Florida for the winter missing their boat. And um, so they were actually coming down and staying aboard the boat for two to three nights a week. We weren't going to make them pay for our slip because it sucked underneath the Miami airport and they were doing us a huge favor to keep right. an eye on the boat and checking things over. Mm -hmm. So it would not have cost less because unless you were leasing out the boat, which kind of gets into fuzzy gray areas as you know, being a renting things out, then okay. oh, this is jump to the end. Okay, here's, that's where we just were. Okay. Wildcat Steve had a question about, he recently signed up for the Mobile Internet Resource Center, so thank you for supporting our work. Um, can I oh, finish sorry. the question, oh, sorry. please? Okay. There he is. Okay. Um, what is the best Wi-Fi booster at present time? And I think Joe already answered, the, answered that um, this is our <laughs> personal space. Um, if you do join us for one of our MIA webinars, which unfortunately we just had one. It was just uh, Sunday evening we had our MIA webinar. But do ask in the member forums. That's where we address during our work hours. Yeah, so we'll basically talk about anything other than mobile internet on the Technomega <laughs> channels right now. <laughs> okay. Let's see, kick that video stall. Okay. Yep. That is a, one of the downsides of broadcasting mm -hmm. via wireless and cellular is you know, we're getting actually had over 50 megabits per second up, but every so often cellular just has little hiccups. And... All right. Here's an interesting question from Laughter on Water. Okay. Um, taking into consideration cost versus enjoyment, what was your favorite spot to stay on the water over the last year? Hmm. I have a really hard time picking favorites. I do, because I mean, I, I'm like an all of the above checkbox. Even even staying under the Miami airport had a lot of neat, it was a neat experience that for one time, I wouldn't sign up to go back there, but everything, if you kind of approach it with that, that attitude of like, hey, I'm here in the moment and I'm soaking up whatever is unique about this place and this experience is pretty cool. We typically go, yeah, wherever we currently are is our favorite place. And then when it no longer starts to feel or starts to feel old, we move on. I, I did say St. Augustine was pretty magical being on that mooring ball downtown. We just thoroughly loved that. Yes. Loved and New Smyrna Beach. New Smyrna Beach and totally falling in love over and over again with Sanford, which is where we're at right now. So I think picking three is probably as best you're going to get. <laughs> yes. Chris just chugged a whole bottle of wine. <laughs> Stream took a wine break, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we are having some issues. I think it was just that, that one little chunk of a few minutes there. But. Okay. All right. 
Let's see. Joe asked, does Florida have any ports with free city docks? Mm -hmm. And yes, there are some free city docks. Um, there were some in New Smyrna Beach. Jacksonville, Jacksonville actually had, had, had a full-on free marina. You could stay for three nights, and then you could pay at $10 for power. But the power, the payment machine is almost always broken, apparently, so you get free power, too. Um, so yes, there are free city docks all up and down. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them are in great locations, and um, you know, there's anchoring out, and then some some cities offer like a free dinghy dock, so you can get ashore yeah, to explore. Um, so that that's awesome that Palm too. Palm Beach, where was that? West Palm, Palm Beach. Yeah, had West that, Palm Beach. Had West a really Palm Beach fabulous... and Boca Raton had that, which was great. Mm -hmm. uh, Gary had asked, just curious, what the boat has for heating purposes. We've got seven heaters on board. Well, eight if you count the cat. Um, so four electric kind of baseboard heaters, and then three reverse cycle air conditioners. And then a cat. So yeah, we had to use them this last week because it's getting down <laughs> into the 30s here. Yes. It was really great. They work well. I'm not sure I would necessarily want to do a like winter, 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 but uh, this boat is was designed for it. Yeah. It, the people who have these up in the north though tend to put in uh, diesel, hydronic, forced air furnaces too, because if you're going to be that cold, you really want your more options. Um, George has a bit off topic. Uh, question looking at getting some bikes perhaps electric bikes your your opinion our slooping adventure starts in 10 months slooping slow loopers i love it and electric bikes are a fabulous thing to have um they're, they're actually particularly handy on a boat where you can use them to provision we use them at marine land um to get the Publix was five miles away and so we were able to do that long round trip that would have really killed us without non-electric bikes. Not and killed us. With We're not groceries. that out of shape. Well, no, no, no. But it <laughs> kill, killed us doing it with with heavy groceries and the paneers. Yeah, it would have been full. much yes. more difficult. Yeah, we, we we actually what we love about the electric bikes is we'll often ride pedal no electric at all until we're tired or far away and we just know that we can use the electric to get back or if we have an errand we can use the electric yeah the electric bikes are great uh we have ejos uh but we bought them 2015 we I, there are tons more options out these days so we have not done research yet into what the current best options are yeah. and actually if anybody has done research we would be interested in one that was better suited for life on a boat on salt water and stuff the ejos are we bought them fast <laughs> yeah we bought them for specifically for the bus and so we just moved them onto the boat and we're finding they're not ideal for marine they're a little larger than i would like for getting on and off the boat sometimes yeah and and also they're just not really marinized they're not stainless mm -hmm. and everything like that and we don't have a way to store any the bikes indoors so they're they're sitting out on the back cockpit and they suffer um, David says he's sorry he joined late. Have we discussed pump out costs at different marinas? We didn't actually discuss the actual cost, so that's actually a great, great question. We talked about it is a cost to consider. Yeah, so, so there's I guess there was a federal subsidy program where where if marinas took federal dollars to install pump out equipments, I think it was federal. I'm not sure it was state, but then they had to commit to allowing pump outs with a max price of five dollars for a pump out right so there was like a, a period of time i think it's five or seven years where they have to offer them at five dollars so that is the the max they can charge um and once they're out of that or if they self-funded their pump out construction they can charge whatever they want uh we have seen pump outs fifteen dollars so we saw some here in the st john's rivers that were 20 or 25 coming down uh we have about a two week 10 to two week capacity 10 day it, to two ten, ten week. week would be <laughs> yeah that'd exciting. be awesome yeah. uh no we have about 10 to 14 day capacity if we're cautious with it so we didn't do a pump out on the way down to st john's we just waited it was first thing we did when we got, got into the marina and uh we have found that if you are staying at the marina a lot of times especially for a uh, daily or monthly or daily or weekly rate it's free it's included the monthly it usually is especially if you're paying liveaboard fees but we have seen some cases where it might be limited to uh, one or two pump outs a month and then you pay extra mm -hmm. the case here at this marina it's free if we take our boat over to the dinghy dock if we want them to bring their boat to us and pump us out at slip then we just pay five bucks a, a pump yeah. out and we've also seen um, a lot of uh, uh, fuel docks have pump outs as well and they will let you pump out for free if you're buying fuel and we know a lot of more serious cruisers who are you know always on the go yeah, they'll they'll just stop in and get just a little bit of fuel. Um, or if they're cruising a lot. Or if they're cruising a lot, a lot of fuel. But you know, they kind of time their their fuel stops with their pump out needs, and um, always manage a free pump out there. And sometimes, if you time it with the fuel dock just right, 
get there at the end of the day and they'll let you stay at the dock overnight and not leave till the morning too. So you get a free overnight on land if you need it. Right. So it varies quite a bit. Um, we've even pulled in, does it, we've radioed ahead and just say, hey, we are having trouble finding a working pump out station. <laughs> Do you have one? It's, oh yeah, come on over and it was free. Um, so it just varies quite a bit. Um, when we were down in the Keys, uh, we were at a marina that had pump out and then after the hurricane, their pump out station was broken. And down in the key, they actually have a free boat that comes right. away. It's part of a Florida Fish and Wildlife program yeah. where they provide, because they have so many anchored and moored boats that would dump otherwise. And so in order to protect the environment, they offer free pump out service once a week. And that boat was coming to our boat once a week mm -hmm. to pump us out after the hurricane. Yeah. So. It does require a lot more thinking and planning around pump outs than it does around dumping an RV, because mm -hmm. dumping an RV, there's options everywhere mm -hmm. relatively. Okay. Uh, Silly Wabbit, what's the best way to shop for a year-round liveaboard community? I'm considering West Coast 40, 50-ish boats. Thanks for any insight. Yeah. We have not shopped for a full-time year-round liveaboard community. We I, are active cruisers. But I guess we stumbled into one in the last two marinas we've been at. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, West Coast, I'm sure there are some. I haven't looked into them too closely. We kind of just have stumbled into them. Personally, I would not pre-commit to a liveaboard community until I was there for a while and got a, a sense of the vibe and the people. Even when we're taking a monthly res a monthly spot, we typically don't pre-reserve those. We show up with a weekly reservation, get a feel for it. And if it feels like something we want to stay, then we see what the options are for extending. Um, and I can't imagine right now in this time in our life settling down for more than we're going to be here three months. This is going to be a long stay right. for us. And uh, three months is about the max stay we do. Right. And we just, uh, we shop for it by serendipity. Yep. <laughs> and yeah, just go and visit. And actually, we have visited mm -hmm. marinas by land to scope them out. That's actually one thing you can do. We've taken, when we had the Mini Cooper in one place, we'd drive ahead and there's, like when we're heading to Fort Myers, there were three marinas to consider. We went and walked through two of them and felt the vibe and decided mm -hmm. where you wanted to go. Yep. So we do hopscotch our Mini Cooper with us because um, we are taking such a slow pace. And the Mini is what we pull behind our bus when we're RVing. Um, so... If we are considering a future next stop, we might just go drive around and visit the marinas in mm -hmm. person. Um, but typically, we just cruise in. We come in with a, a reservation yeah. for a few nights or a week. And we, we read the active captain reviews and stuff and kind of trust uh, trust the reviews a little bit. If there's, mm -hmm. there's... There was somebody uh, had a question right above there. Uh, I was shopping... St. Augustine had cheap moorings, so they also have a free dinghy dock. If, if you're if you're moored, you get access to the dinghy dock, but otherwise they charged you like ten or fifteen dollars a day, almost as much as the mooring fee. It was a little less than the mooring fee, but yeah, if you're anchored out and wanted to use their dock for shore access, which was really the only option. Yep, uh, I think there was a, a landing fee. I don't remember what it is. It should be on their website, and they also have a marina there. If I remember, it was like twelve dollars per foot for a week. So we looked at the cost of that, and it's like, you know what? A mooring ball sounds fun. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was, I think we paid $200 to stay there for 10 days and just had a ball. Ha, 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 I cracked uh, myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe would like to know, are we using active captain or cruising guides to learn in advance your marina stops? We use both. Um, Waterway guides and active, active captain. captain are our two go-to sources that mm -hmm. we look for when researching the options. Um, then we go read reviews on both of those, uh, look up the rates, look up what's around to do. And then, um, like I said, we typically don't book more than a week in advance. And then we just trust if we're meant to be there, it'll work out. <laughs> it does. Uh, there was a question from Altitude who asked what kind of refrigerator we have in a Bayliner 4788. And ours is, had the marine fridge replaced by the prior owner with just Here, a I can basic... Actually... Oh, yeah, you could Excuse our messy kitchen. We have not done dishes today. It is just a basic apartment fridge. I think he said he got it at a scratch and dent sale at Home Depot. Yeah, there's, you can kind of see the scratch and dent down there. It's a, it looks pretty good. It's a stainless front, but it was like a $200 just apartment fridge. Um, so it needs the inverter full time, and it is a little bit of a, a power hog. Um, but it's you know, $200 as opposed to a marine fridge from like Vitrofrigo would be like $1,600. So we're not in a rush to replace it. We might one day. It's working for now. Yep. 
Uh, laughter on water. As I'm guessing you eat in more than you eat out. Mm, that would be a bad guess. That's about 50-50. Uh, yeah. Do you find yourself eating a lot of seafood and are you allowed to fish or do you need a license? So you definitely need a license to fish in, in Florida, most places, in most yeah. places, and no, we do not fish because it is a lot cheaper to eat to, a lot of seafood to eat a lot buying. of seafood by buying it and supporting the local fishing community, which yeah, is so what we found. We'll hit the fresh fish markets and stuff like that and get good fish and um, love seafood, grill seafood all the time. Mm -hmm. We uh, are... Um, I don't eat uh, mammal, so uh, fish is my primary source of meat, um, and I will occasionally have chicken and, and turkey. He's a flexitarian, friggin' opportunivore. Opportunivore, basically, he'll eat anything, but he defaults vegetarian. Uh, so we do a lot of vegetarian at home, and then fish and chicken, poultry every so often. Um, when we're in a place that has good eating out options, we do indulge in eating out. For us, that is part of the experience of travel. Is finding the cool, unique local restaurants, and Sanford is overloaded with them. If you're ever in the area, go to the Willow Tree Cafe. It's a unique experience. Yes. So here in Sanford, we got a bunch of great restaurants out our door. So we do eat out a couple times a week, a few times a week, sometimes just for lunch. We go out two or three times for dinner. And then we do cook in quite a bit. So... Um, or heat things up. I don't really consider myself a chef. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> but... Okay. Uh, Tim had asked, how did they figure out the foot length? And we did a whole section on that. If you go look at the archive yeah. on that, I'm not going to go over it again. It was nope. about a 20 minute section. Yeah. But we have heard of some marinas that actually will measure you. Mm -hmm. The dock master will come out with a tape measure. So mm -hmm. sometimes they will put you to the test. Uh, Gary says, do you have someone put some uh, fuel stabilizer in Zephyr now that it'll sit for a year? We actually should have my brother go over and do yeah, that. Yeah, we probably should. Yes. Great idea. Yes. Uh, Joe says Willow Tree was awesome. Yes, Joe jo joined us for that meetup. It was fun. Uh, Brian says, are we staying on the boat all winter? And yes, we actually published a video just last night going over the change of plans. But yes, the plan is we are staying on the boat this winter here in Sanford because we love it so much. And we are going to be flying out and renting an RV to attend the Escapers Annual Bash in January. <sighs> all right. We're caught up on questions. We are caught up on questions. This is last call. Yeah. Woohoo. Uh, hopefully oh. some useful information for some. Yeah, we, we could actually talk over the, the narrate the, the little video loop if we want. No, not yet. No, okay, not yet. Okay. Uh, see if there's any other questions. Um, we're going to try to get a little bit more content out by the end of the year. Um, and then after the first of the year, hopefully we'll be able to catch you guys up on the amazing cruise down from Jacksonville on the St. John's River. It was fantastic. And I just feel with the holidays that it, it would get too messed up, missed by visiting. We just got a little flood of questions here. Okay. Um, somebody, uh, Valerie asks if they have a boat parade in Sanford and Not did they participate? Yeah, they used to. Apparently the attendance had dropped off and the person who ran it got uh, overwhelmed and they didn't do it last year and they're not doing one this year. But they had an amazing downtown city parade that had an hour and a half worth of floats and bands and everything else. We had front row seats for that. So that was an incredible experience. All right. Uh, Valerie noticed our Christmas icicles on the cockpit mm -hmm. um, as well. So, um, yeah, no, yep, no, boat, no boat parade. Uh, <laughs> Silly Wabbit wants to know how does video and photography and all that stuff impact our cruising? Um. We try not to let it impact it too much, um, but you know we do think about like, hey, you know, maybe we should set up a camera and, and try to record this stuff. But we only do if it's fun. Um, yeah, we're we're not out to try to build up a reality show about our lives, and we try not to let a sharing about our lives impact the way we experience our travels. Mm -hmm. And I watch some of the other channels that are out there and. I feel that it does impact the way that they experience the world. And, and that might be awesome and how they choose to do it. Um, most of what we do and the, what we explore doesn't make it to our channel. We'll, we'll talk about it, but we, we're not going out with a shot list setting out to film certain things on certain days for certain reasons and stuff. Oh, we got a. Oh, this the um, paddle wheel boat going past us. I was like, all yeah. these lights moving. There's a full-on yeah. riverboat that docks right over there. Um, a actual real paddle wheeler, which is very cool. We've yeah, been we've on it twice. twice. Um, so yeah, we don't really... Uh, we film when we have something to film, and that's why you'll see a lot, even in our travelogue videos, you'll get us talking for about 10 <laughs> minutes and overlaying B-roll footage of stuff that we captured. Um, because we don't want to be 
be that guy out there filming everything that we mm -hmm. are. We prefer to experience and remember. Uh, George asks, they're, saying they're coming to this area next month, and what is Deland like? And we've barely been to Deland, but along the river, there was a really cool-looking uh, marina and restaurant and stuff right by the bridge mm -hmm. in Deland that looks... Probably, we'd probably try and stop there when we head back down the river, so... But on land, we don't know a thing about Deland. Yep. Uh, Steve says, have we looked into current generators for a while at Anchor? And we have a brand new generator. We just replaced ours uh, back in May uh, with a Northern Lights 6 kilowatt hour one. So yeah, 6,000 6, watt Northern Lights. And mm -hmm. it worked out really great. We've, put a, we've, we've got 300 something hours on the generator so far. And it was nice to have a generator that was reliable. And yes. H237 says we have one of the world's great value cruising vessels and one and are in the best cruising waters in the U.S. What is the appeal of doing one of the most overrated cruises, the Great Loop? I don't I've, think it's overrated I don't think it's at overrated. all. I, I love river cruising. I mean, just going up the St. John was a testament to that. Is river cruising is a blast. We get access to all these cities, and yeah. that's what we like. Um, we've done full-time RVing for 12 years and explored a lot of this country by land. Mm -hmm. And it keeps us in touch with our RVing community because a yeah. lot of the places meet up with our but, RVing friends. But there's no one right answer. to. I mean, some people are they're, they're so excited about you know blue sandy beaches and Bahama-type cruising. Some people want to go out and conquer an ocean. Some people want to cruise the ICW and you know that that they're they're, no, they're all great yeah. answers but it's <laughs> not the focus for us right now uh, we like to be close to family we like to be somewhere where family can come join us on board and cruise yeah. with us where friends can as well um, we want accessible like you know we're here in Sanford and Joe uh, the moderator <laughs> here he's a you know a, a friend of ours over the years and he's an hour away so we've been able to meet up now Twice. Three, three, times? Times, three times? Three times so far since we've been here. And mm -hmm. it's great to be able to still be with our RVing community that's very near and dear to our yeah. hearts. Um, so that's a big part of it. Also, we still work full time. Yes. We need internet connection and well, our... And we need time to do it. So we yes. don't, we're not constantly, mm -hmm. you know, we, we need work days as well as play days. And we try so, to split them up. So the Great Loop gives us um, great access to towns and cities, uh, keeps us in connectivity, close to friends and family, and gives us interesting things to explore. So. Okay. And um, then uh, um, Hilly Billy Bob asks why we pick Sanford. And Sanford is the end of the line if you do the St. John's River Cruise. It is as far south on the river as you can go in a, anything other than a bass boat. So it, this is the turnaround point, and it also happens to be a really, really great a cruising destination that a, not a lot of cruisers actually bother to go all the way up here. It's a really off the beaten path, undiscovered gem as far as the bigger cruising community is. And, uh, Steve is, Steve points out that when he's talking about current generators, he's talking about the ones that use um, oh. tidal current from uh, a power generated on your swim step, and that is contingent on being someplace where there's a strong enough current, I guess. There's no current here. In... Yeah, here there's none. <laughs> um, when we were on the mooring ball, there might have been. Um, oh, he so, meant yeah. current by current, yes. not current by okay, yes. current. Um, All right. Yeah, I, I've actually seen a few of those. I've, I've seen very mixed reviews from what little I've read, but you know, for a lot of the places we're intending to go, there's not a lot of current, so it hasn't been high up on my research list. I'm much more excited about getting solar on the roof. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we're going to cut out. It's been about an hour. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, if you want to join us in our virtual crew, we've moved on from Patreon to a virtual crew mentality. You can uh, go to our Say Thanks page um, on our website to learn more about yeah. that. But uh, and, and you don't have to say thanks by actually sending money or a bottle of wine. And so sometimes just say thanks in a comment down here. You know, to Comment on videos, give them thumbs up, You know, interact with us. Mm -hmm. That's why we do this is to be interacted with. So hey, mm -hmm. say hi. All right, guys, have a great evening, great holiday season, and we'll see you next time. And now here's a little, some of our top marinas views of the year. See if you can spot why not. Yes, yeah, we are in every one of these. Oh, this is basically all the way back to Salty Sam's. And, ah, Burdines. This was pre-Irma.
And thank you so much, Joe, for moderating. You are awesome. That is uh, Burdine's post, Irma. All the sunk boats next to us. We hear it's come back amazingly. That even even by the time we left, it, it was improved. But we hear hear that uh, marathon is starting to be really nice again. And you can see why not there at the end after she survived we a got direct so lucky. Cat four strike. the keys. This is in Tavernier. We were actually went to this marina to ride out a tropical storm after we were trying to get out of the keys post Irma. It kept us nicely protected. I think the winds got up to about 35, 40 miles per hour and it was, yeah. turned out to be a no non event. Not event, but we were a little skittish. And this is the marina we stayed at for the MTOA rendezvous um, in April and May where we got that great raid at, and we had the generator mm -hmm. swapped out. That yeah, big boat we just flew over on the right was actually an Airbnb. And there's Why Not. They're supposed to be playing Spot the Boat, not Give oh, Away. Oh, sorry. Yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> this is New Smyrna Beach. And one of the places where we showed up with the weekly reservation and end up, I think it was about five weeks. Yes, and the, uh, the, the monthly rate was uh, a fabulous deal. Yeah, but it's unwritten monthly rate. Yeah, it's a secret monthly rate. They only they, have it's a, seven transient spots. It's a very small marina, but such a great location. Downtown is right there. This is Marine Land. Beautiful location right on the beach. Great beach access. You have the Marine Land uh, Marine Wildlife Center right across the street. One of the Guaranteed oldest, dolphin sightings. <laughs> one of the oldest oceanariums in the world. I think it is the oldest yeah. oceanarium This in the is world. where they pioneered underwater filmmaking. And uh, um, actually, this is where they invented echolocation and taught the dolphins how to use sonar. Yeah, it's fun to go look at these old <laughs> videos, the places we've been this year. There's the dolphins there. They use fresh water there. Or not freshwater, like ocean water. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, there's the dolphins don't like freshwater. There's our mooring ball in St. Augustine. We right. had to uh, dinghy underneath the bridge to the dinghy dock, and then we had access to all of the historic St. Augustine. It was amazing. And you see how much space you have around you, which is really nice. This is Ortega Landing. Again. So is that by Jacksonville? We showed up with a weekly reservation, realized it was peak of hurricane season, and this was a relatively Notice safe spot. Notice the hot tub in the bottom right corner there? In the pool that was yep. used almost daily. <laughs> nice little protected cove, survived Irma well, so we decided to stay here for hurricane and season. It was hot, so we really loved that, having the pool We access. started out in a slip right there. Why not just went off the screen? But then they moved us to the front dock, so we had wide open water views the whole time. Yep. And this, this is, is looping back to Fort Myers. This is back... Uh, before our logo was put on. Yes, yeah, before Why Not had its official naming. So this is where we stayed in Fort Myers for three months, right after we got Why Not. You can see downtown is right there. The farmer's market's right under the where the, yes. the highway bridge is. The little sailboat was really on there for the first two weeks, and then we had wide open views on all sides of us. Yeah, that's the joy of being in the off-season. In the on-season, in the winter, that place is completely packed. But in the summer, wide open. All right, and we're back to the beginning. So that's it. Have okay. a great evening. And yeah, I'm going to stop this stream. Thank everybody for joining.